is that what you're describing here? Yes, yes, yes. I feel exactly like this. I feel that my heart is racing. I feel palpitations. I feel also, I feel horrible. I feel that I'm about to die, doctor. It is a horrible feeling. I cannot withstand it. And then eventually I go to the to, to, to the ER and they say that I don't have anything, but I'm sure that I'm suffering. Okay, okay. Um, so do you think that you get reassured after that? or? Well, temporarily, but after that, I get these attacks. Now I get these attacks not less than three times a week, though. Okay, okay. So how, do you start when all, this all started? Do you remember when? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember it all started about uh, three months ago. I've been troubled by fr by these symptoms, but it used to really took just one or two minutes. But now it's more frequent and lasting longer, maybe 20 minutes and three times a week. I started only once per every two weeks. I'm really suffering, doctor. I'm not exaggerating. Yeah, I can, I can really see that you're really um, suffering, as you're telling me. And uh, I can only imagine what you're going through. But do you remember what happened, anything like happened around the time that started three months back now? You know, we, we, were, we were stuck in, in the, uh, the only thing uh, that we were stuck in the subway, you know, the electricity were off. But everything, everyone around me we were also uh, anxious and, and was worried. I was not only the only one. Um, but after that, I kept feeling the same feeling that about to die. You know, these symptoms keep, keep, keep coming to me. I'm really sorry I had to go through that incident of the, the electricity going off and all of that. But now now when you have these episodes, you told me that they, they're becoming more frequent. Yeah. But does anything bring them on now? No, no, it just came out of the blue. Okay, okay. And what goes through your mind? You told me that you feel that you're losing control and you're about to die. Anything else that comes to mind during these episodes? Well, like nothing. Just I feel that I have a heart attack, and I I, I go to to the ER, and I have this trembling, you know, chest pain, and heart racing, and all these symptoms. Okay, so in between these kind of uh, episodes or attacks, how do you feel? Well, I I don't feel anything, but I I, I I now I'm very worried between them that I might have these attacks, and I I'm worried that I might not have anyone around me to to help me, so I always stay at home beside the phone now, most of the time. Oh, uh, I see it's had a, a, an impact on your life, so yeah, yes, uh, as you're yes. not going out anymore. Uh, what other, what are else impacts that you affected, you've noticed on your life as well? Well, Doctor, no, I'm, I'm just, I'm a student, so definitely I'm, I'm frequently absent from the college and, and and they don't understand what's going on i don't get a medical report for my suffering okay okay I see and uh, it sounds like a lot so how has your mood been through all of this well I, I, apart from the attacks i just most of the time i'm worried I, I, i'm not don't feel I, i'm not sad and I'm, I'm not depressed i want to go out and, and live my life and want to go to the college but i can't do, do you still enjoy things in life as before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish to go out and uh, I used to jog every day. I used to go to the college. I used to go out with my friends. Now I, I, I'm afraid to have these attacks most of the yeah. time. Yeah, yeah it sounds very difficult. Uh, has there been any time that you felt so low that you you thought that ending your life? No, 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 no. Okay, I see. And how would you describe yourself as a person in general? I don't know. What Do you worry mean. about? Yeah, I'm sorry about. Yeah, yeah. To I, some I meant... extent, I'm I'm a person who gets easily worried. Yeah, for minor events. Yeah. Okay. Do you have like specific um things that you um are afraid of or? No, no. You try to avoid or? No, no. Okay, and um, how do you cope with all of this? Well, I, I don't know. I feel safe at home, but still, I get these attacks. Now, most of the time, I'm staying at home. Everyone asking what's going on. Uh, I just say that I feel that I, I might get sick. Nobody asks to say what's going on, even the doctors. Okay. Oh, some people might use, like, alcohol to cope. No, that the no, no. How about One recreational minute. drugs? No. How no. about recreational drugs? Okay. And um, have you... Have you 
Have you seen a psychiatrist before, Mr. Robin? No, this is the first time. Okay, okay. And how about family history? Is there anybody in the family that have mental illness issues? Yeah, yeah. My mother had a, a, an anxiety disorder. She she's always on some medications, but I don't remember okay. the name. Okay. How about your medical health? Anything that you want to share with me? Like what? No. Uh, do you do you feel that you have uh, um, a change of feel of cold, uh, weather no. cold or hot? No. How about no. bowel change? Any kind of that thing? No. 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 Okay, okay. So thank you for sharing all of that with me, Robin. Um, uh, I think what you're going through is something we call panic disorder, where you have these physical symptoms and you go to the A&E, as you told me, and then uh, you do all the investigation and nothing is found wrong. Um, and you're assured for some time, but they come back again. There is help available. And if we can have another appointment to discuss these kind of uh, help, would that be okay with you? Okay. Okay, I can also refer you to the website of the Royal College read about Banach disorder uh, and different... Time, uh, time, time, time. Excellent, mashallah. You're very clever today, what's going on. Really anxious, really anxious actually. I felt like panicking myself. No, but... no, no. Actually, it was very good, very organized. I have no compare. I wouldn't have done it better than you. The good thing is that you paid attention to the, uh, the emotions which I was trying to elaborate, you were keen to to him whenever I showed that I was uh, in trouble because of my suffering. Very good, very, ink, very, very good uh, interviewing skill. I hope that Thank you, you give her some feedback. Please, if you are keen to, yeah, we are keen to help each other, please. Uh, I thought that, um, yeah, I felt stammering at some points because English is not my first language and I tried to translate. Well, actually, from, yes, yes, yeah. I understand. This can be, you know, un, not very fair for those who are IMGs. And actually, there are two points for the language and the mark sheet, which makes a big difference in the results. And that's why yeah. might, this one might give the impression that the uh, results are, uh, you know, to deviate it to a, a positively towards native English, but it's related to the language primarily. So let's see how this station goes. So it is a panic disorder, as you know. Get 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 ready for this common question. Why am I talking to a psychiatrist? The common simple answer that mind and body are one unit. The physical symptoms and psychological reason can have psychological reasons when the physical assessment investigations are free from abnormalities. You can phrase it by any way. However, be ready for this question. Then you take the complaint, and there is a rule of thumb for the complaint. You there is a current situation, you want to know the onset and course and the duration and what, how was he doing before this current situation, okay? Yeah, I so forgot that. Also, okay, which you did very good, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. And then you ask about the symptoms of syndrome. Any psychological phenomenon, you can put it into four domains, thinking, feeling, uh, physical symptoms, and behavior. So have thinking, feeling, physical symptoms, and behavior. You can ask these domains about any psychological phenomenon. You must assess it in these four domains to make sure that you will not miss anything. So you ask about the thinking, you ask about the feelings. Uh, very good that you ask about the physical symptoms and you want to know exactly why. You, you made this particular point. Did you ask me, so what do you do when you have these attacks and so on? I think you did ask. You you kind of volunteered and I didn't yeah, yeah, want to yeah, like okay. emphasize so, that you told me but, I tried to stay at home yeah. so I said that's no, embarrassed no. yeah. Now yeah. the point is that don't forget that we, whenever you encounter any psychological phenomenon even in new stations, these are the four domains which will help you to assess this particular syndrome in a very organized way. Even if you don't know what is the diagnosis, but when you ask about the thinking, what runs in the patient's fear, uh, mind. How was he feeling during this particular syndrome? Whether it is uh, panic attacks, post traumatic, et cetera, the physical symptoms associated, and what are the particular behavior associated with this uh, phenomenon? And then you, make, you will be uh, definitely covering this particular phenomenon in depth. Now, the comorbidity, I like that you ask about the, my, the possible associated anxiety disorder, and in this particular station, there will be. Uh, associated anxiety that he is already a, an anxious person, okay? And I like that you ask about the physical symptoms, particularly thyroid. You ask about the psychological, the social, and we will go through the mark sheet and you will know that each point of these points 
are related to the mark sheet, okay? You ask up in depth, more than one question in the impact coping and risk. Then you ask about past history and family history. And yes, there is a point here related to the past family history. His mother had anxiety disorder, very clever that you ask this. And then eventually you deliver the diagnosis. Very good, okay? Very, very good, inshallah. Thank you. So let's see again the mark sheet. This is the most important thing. If you come out of this session with a, a, an ingrained evaluation and ingrained appreciation of this mark sheet, this will make a big difference in the way which you are going to prepare and your score. So you identify the issues and priorities. You, uh, the different aspects of the history, we said it's not only about the nosology, there are other aspects in the history which you should cover. The depth, as you can see here, there's a point for the, de the uh, depth in depth for the symptoms. As we said, the four domains which we have talked about. The risk assessment, again, there's a point for the risk assessment. Definitely, if you have a point for a particular uh, uh, issue, you need to ask more than one question. I think two questions are enough. Are enough. Uh, sufficient attention to the patient physically and has the you when you show empathy and you are keen to pay attention to what I feel definitely this point is going to be scored for you. And finally, this point is for the comorbidity, the associated psychological and social information. This point is usually missed by the candidates. Uh, pay attention to the associated social information, the impact, the life circumstances of the, or on the patient's life, which you have covered in a very good way. It was very organized. It was not formalic. Your attitude was good. Uh, though you, I can feel that you're a bit anxious, but we cannot say that it was inappropriate attitude, okay? Your listening skill was good. And as you can see here, these are the two points which are related to the language. So unfortunately, the IMGs usually suffer from these two points. While the native English or those who are good in English would not have any problem. So pay attention to these two points. You can overcome this problem by properly preparing and having your own notes and just use simple language, simple questions. In the beginning, you will find that you are writing too much, you are preparing too much, but with time, you'll find that you are repeating the same questions. Okay, this is the only way in order to make sure that you pass these two, if your language is not helping you. Okay, there is no place here to take English courses. Too late. Okay, so thank you so much, dear doctor. Thank you so much. You're very clever, inshallah. Thank so you. who would like to go next? Who would like to go next? I think next is Sumatra Forum. I think this is the uh, Dr. Uh, Hajra, or who, who's the, whose turn is? Yes, yes, Hajra. Yeah, it's my turn, yeah. So what is your station, Dr. Hajra? It's Metro Forum, Somatic Okay. So I want to call in. One minute to share it. Okay. So they are very clever. What's going on? Again, this are super. Okay. okay. So, mashallah. Yeah, okay. Ready? Yes, I'm ready. Uh, what is the name of the uh, patient? The same, my name is Michael, okay? Okay, yeah. I will set the timer. One, two, three, go. Hello, Mr. Michael. My name is Dr. Hello. Hachra and I'm one of the psychiatrists here. I understand that you have been referred by your pain specialist because you are having some difficulties lately. And I'm here to have a conversation to see how best we can help you. Well, I don't want to be rude, but why am I afraid to psychiatrist? I'm not crazy. I'm just suffering from pain in my back. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I understand this this must be confusing for you, but I'm just one of the doctors of the team. And for some uh, for some people, it happens that if they, the physicians cannot find a physical cause of their symptoms, then a psych, psych, psychiatrist input sometimes helps the patient. Okay, no problem. Okay, so I understand you have you are having a back pain for a, quite a while now. Yes, 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 and it's uh, I'm really suffering because of it. Okay, I'm really sorry that you are having such a difficult time. Could you elaborate a bit more to me about this back pain you are having? One, it is very agonizing pain. Sometimes I'm not able to go to work. Sometimes I keep resting in my bed for not less than twelve hours because of it and. Has been going on for three years, and I cannot. Nobody knew what's wrong with my back. Yeah, yeah. Three years seems quite a long time. I can see that. So, could you remember what happened? If anything particular happened three years ago when it all started? Well, it, it started out of the blue. Uh, I I don't know nothing. I didn't carry anything uh, heavy. No trauma to my back. It just happened. Okay. Uh, no, 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 -physical, no physical problem. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you mentioned no physical problems. What was anything weren't you at that time when it all started? Well, nothing at this time. You said that we were, I was doing at this time a lot of investigations because, you know, my wife and me, I wanted to have a baby and uh, I had some issues and I did a lot of investigations. And it seemed yeah. that it's very difficult to have a baby. Uh, but but I, I don't think that it has anything to do with my back. Because I did yeah, a lot yeah. of medical checkups and, and nothing was there. Yeah. So you mentioned that all the, you, you're having some trouble with your wife, right? Well, yeah. no problems with my wife. It's just she wants to have a baby. And medically, it seemed that for me, it is difficult to have a baby. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I can understand. This might have it having an impact on you. Yes, yes. Okay. So uh, I would like to elaborate a bit more on the pain you are having. Okay. So anything particular that triggers the episode of pain? Nothing, nothing. Okay, and anything that could relieve it? No, not except if I, if I just stayed addressed Nobody talks to me for six to 12 hours. It just goes away. Okay. And how has the pain progressed throughout these three years? You know, it is the same agonizing yeah. pain. Uh, I... yeah. and, and you mentioned that you, are, you have been having the physical investigations. How do you feel when the doctors tell you that they are not all normal? Well, uh, temporarily I feel reassured until I have this uh, pain again. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I understand. This must be difficult for you. So do you do anything else to relieve your pain? Well, no. Just okay. I trust just to rest. I, I took some, uh, you know, painkillers, but they don't make any improvement. Yeah. I'm just wondering, has the pain ever been so intense that you took the pain medications more than what you intended to? No, 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 no. Okay, okay. With all this going on, how has your mood been? Well, to some extent, you know, I feel frustrated because of this pain and, and also because my wife wants a child and at the same time not happy with adoption. Yeah, yeah, okay. And how are you sleeping well right now? Yes, yes, yes. And are you? How, how is your appetite? My appetite is good. Okay, okay. Are you feeling that you have enough energy to carry out the activities of the day? Yes, uh, I want, but if I have this back pain, I can. So can you go to your work and continue? despite having this pain. Well, well, if I don't have this pain, I can go to work. Please, please, doctors, mute your mics. Please, doctors, mute your mics. Doctor. Okay, go. Continue, please, doctor. Yeah, so I asked that if you are able to continue your work. Yes, yes, I go to my work regularly. 
Okay, okay, it's good to know. And you mentioned that you have some medical problems, that's why you are unable to have a child. Could you elaborate a bit more on that as well? I didn't have a mental problems. I didn't have any mental problem. No, no, medical problem. No, I, I, I just had, uh, the doctor said that my chances of having a baby will not be, are not high if ever there is a chance. Okay, okay. So I can understand this must be difficult for you as a couple. Yeah. Mr. Michael, have you ever been in touch with the psychiatric services before? No, one, one. one. Oh, okay. no, it's the first time. Uh, One minute remaining. Do you ever use any alcohol to cope with all this? No, no, no. Okay. Any other recreational drugs? No, no. Okay, okay. Someone in your family who has a mental health disorder? No, no, no. Okay. Sometimes it happens that people might get so frustrated that they have thoughts of ending their life. Do you do you experience something similar? No. Okay, okay. And are you, how do you explain yourself as a person? Are you a warrior? To some extent, yes, yeah. Okay. And for some people, they are afraid of other, th they, they, they do get some anxious thoughts in their mind regarding other things as well. Do you have something similar? No, no. So, thank you, Mr. Michael, for speaking with me today. From what you have told me, I understand that what we are going through it's called a somatic pain disorder in the terms of psychiatric in which the uh, psychological stressors manifest themselves in the form of physical symptoms however you don't time, need to time, worry there time, is a... time, time, time. Uh, how do you feel about what you did though i hope that you give her some uh, feedback how do you feel about what you did uh, i was so anxious i i couldn't perform <laughs> Well, you know, the the uh, the best management for this anxiety is your practice. The more you practice, yeah. the more you'll be confident while you are doing this station because you have done it several times. This is the best management of this anxiety, which is a very common thing, and it is a positive thing. We are doctors because we are basically anxious. We are anxious that we might fail the exam, so we study so hard, and that's why we came more. Most of the doctors are anxious from my experience while I'm doing tutoring. Most of them are anxious. And I think this is why we are doctors, because we are very anxious. We try to do everything as much as possible good. That's why we became uh, doctors and we excel in our exams. So what you are passing through is very common, but please practice as much as possible. Please, doctors, give her some feedback and let's see how this station could be done according to my notes. You can see, I just try to help according to my. Okay, okay. so uh, the only thing which I hope that you would have done better that better organization, uh, try to be more empathetic. Uh, your anxiety was very evident. That's why I pay attention to it. And please try to cover the pain in depth when you assess. It. And actually, this is a particular thing which most of the kids don't know how to assess the pain. So let's see how we do it. So you, you did your introduction very good and pay attention to the introduction. This is the first thing which you do in your station and first impressions give a good impression about and it persists. So if you don't know how to do introduction, pay attention to this. You did a good introduction, the rule of thumb, you identify yourself, you greet the patients by his name and, and, and you explain why you are talking to him. And then you took the complaint how is going the onset cost duration and the current situation and how was he doing before the onset this is how we take the complaint it's not only so what what are you complaining from there are things and areas to be covered in the complaint to make sure that you cover the complaint in depth and this area before the onset is the most important question because most of the kids forget it and this is the area which you know, the Royal College now is focusing on the predisposing and precipitating factors. So many of the tricks are put in this area before the onset. How was the patient doing? Okay. And now the symptom syndrome, which how to assess the pain. And actually, you will. Uh, I don't want to raise my nose, but you will not find this assessment anywhere else. So when you assess the pain, you want to know the nature of the pain. Can you describe it for me? The location, any part of part, any part of the back, the neck, 
in the middle of the back, in the lower part of the back? Does it progress or stationary? Is it associated with any other symptoms? Okay. And the effect, does it affect the bowel or urinary control? Most probably if there is an associated organic problem, there will be uh, some sort of uh, effect on his bowel or urine or any other symptoms, and there will be progression. This is a very important question. Usually the organic pain is present during the sleep and makes the patient wake up because of the pain. So you want to know in particular, if you have a patient who has pain, to differentiate it between, to differentiate between psychological and non-psychological, does this pain wake up the patient from his sleep or not? If it doesn't, most probably, it doesn't have an organic pain. You, can, you remember if you have pain in your teeth, you wake up from the, have you ever had any pain in your teeth, Dr. Hajra? So definitely. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, you, you wake up from it. From the middle of the night, you, you wake up uh, because of this pain. You want to know the duration. <clears throat> you want to know in between the attacks, uh, in between what happened. And the investigation, the R stands for the in-between and the investigations. Okay. And finally, his explanation. What is his explanation? In order to make sure that he does not uh, uh, as a, it is not a an, a, a hypochondriasis. This is a very important question because if he explains this pain as a cancer, for example, uh, so this could be a hypochondriasis. So you can have this exam panelized. This will help you to remember the points to be covered. Okay, panelized. These points are all the points related to the uh, in-depth assessment of the uh, uh, this particular pain. Okay, you want to know the comorbidity which you asked about, but unfortunately it felt that you were a bit disorganized because uh, you were kept going back and forth in this area. Try to assess the comorbidity as one chunk. Um, and, and and please, I, I, would have, I, I would have just asked you in this particular station, if you just focus a little bit in his social circumstances, because it seems that there has been something going on because of this, and I kept well, kept hinting about it. Just a couple of questions. So how about your life circumstances, your stressors, uh, anyone around to support you, and so on. And then he, I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't feel that you accept the risk at all, Dr. Hajim. So you want to know how has been, how did this affect his life, if there is any... Uh, thoughts or dark thoughts of ending his life, or life was not worth living or hurting himself, and so on. I think you asked about the past history and family history, and finally you delivered the diagnosis. So let's see, uh, let's see at the beginning just something which I hope that you pay attention to. This is the plan for you if you are going to go through the station. These are the seven points which you are going to go through uh, in order. Uh, in order to make sure that you cover the station and most of the, and all of the uh, points in the mark sheet in order to make sure that you pass the station. These are the seven points. Introduction, you take the complaint, symptom syndrome, comorbidity, impact causing risk, past history, family history, and finally delivering the diagnosis. So let's see the mark sheet and I hope that you pay attention to the mark sheet. It's not a pass or fail, just to understand how to use the mark sheet when you are uh, uh, practicing and revising and for the exam. So you identify the issues and priorities, which is his back pain, the different aspects of history, you, you ask about them, the presence or, or the symptoms in depth, I don't think that this point is going to be scored for you. The risk, I didn't feel that you accept the risk in depth. Um, you did not ask me, so how, what is your opinion or, or, or what is your explanation? This is his health view. This point might not be scored for you. I hope that you would have asked me a bit more about the social circumstances. It's all about his social life and social stressors. And this point might not be scored for you. Uh, it was a bit disorganized. Other than this, everything was fine in your communication. It is not a pass or fail, but just to help you to understand how you are assessed and how you use this mark sheet. Uh, anyway, very clever, Dr. Hajra. 
Okay, don't be get, don't be frustrated from my assessment. I'm just trying to help you. Okay. I have a question to ask. If that's okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Who would like to go next? Uh, can I ask a question, please? Yeah. Okay. So I just got uh, confused uh, when you mentioned that. Uh, you are I, I picked up that you are saying that I am uh, having some medical issues so I am unable to have a child right now and adoption is not an option for me so how further are we going to explain that point which is thrown by the road no you just ask in depth so what, what do you mean by this medical problems I, I, I explained to you that it is uh, as I related to the fertility that I'm not able to uh, not able to have babies that's it you don't have to go through this because this is not the main complaint. Is in this station you are asked about the uh, the back pain and what could be the reasons behind it. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. Who would like to go next? Yeah, I'm next, Doctor Ibrahim. Yes, Doctor. So, what is your station, Doctor? Version disorder. Hypo what? Version. Conversion disorder. Conversion disorder, yes, conversion I'm ready whenever you're ready. Okay. We can start the person. Very clever. Okay. Let's say that my name is uh, Roberta. Roberta. Okay. So, and I will be the patient. And pay attention in this particular station. You are seeing a patient who is just, who came to the ER from her father's funeral. So, pay attention to the empathy. Okay. okay, pay attention okay. to the input. Okay, so uh, we'll start. I will start the timer now. One, two, three, four. Start, please. Stop. Hello, Roberta. Um, Dr. Shah, one of the psychiatrists. Hello, Dr. Um, I'm here to speak to you about um, what happened that led to you coming to the hospital. Well, doctor, I, I cannot move my left arm and leg. I, I'm not crazy. Why am I talking to a psychiatrist? I can imagine how all of this can be confusing for you. Um, I'm here to speak to you as part of holistic management, holistic care to see how I can work with the neurologist and the, the, the physical health doctors to better, to see how we can better support you. Is that okay? Okay, hey, doctor, no problem. Um, first of all, Roberta, I understand you came here right from your father's funeral. I'm so sorry. Yes. To, I'm so sorry about your father's passing. Thank you. Do you. You feel able to have this conversation? Yes, yes, yeah. Okay. Thank you for agreeing to speak with me. So, uh, Roberta, tell me. Um, what happened? Uh, what, tell me more about this weakness. What were you doing? In, in, in the funeral, I, I, uh, suddenly I was not able to move my left and uh, arm and left leg. I was not able to move and I fell down. Okay. And, uh, and everyone in the funeral just was shocked. And, uh, but I couldn't do anything. I just couldn't move. That must have been... Quite scary for everyone. Did you have any pain in the leg at no, that time? No, 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 no. 
Okay. Any other any other symptom you had in the leg apart from? Mm. No, no. Okay. Um. At the moment, what are you able to do with that leg? I just can't move my left arm and leg. That's it. I can't do anything. Um. Okay. So you can't do anything with them. Okay. Yeah. So uh. What happened after, okay, you've told me that you fell when you felt the weakness and everyone gathered and brought you here. How do you feel about this weakness in your left arm and left leg? Well, what can I do, doctor? It's just something there and I'm waiting to know what is going on. I don't okay. care. If my father just passed away. What could yeah. happen worse? Yeah. Um, I understand all the tests that have been done by the other doctors and the neurologists all returned normal. How do you feel about that? Well, it's their job. Why so do you ask me? So I don't know. I'm waiting for, for the assessment. Okay. Do you feel any relief that nothing has been found? I don't um, care. I don't care, actually. I don't care. Okay. Uh, is this something that has happened before, Roberta? No, no, no. Um, in your opinion, what do you think would have caused this? Well, actually, in my opinion, anything is not of importance at all. After the loss of my father, I don't care. No. I, I don't have any opinion. Okay. I don't I care. The father's passing is, is a difficult thing for you. I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry. definitely. It is difficult. And anything after it, it's meaningless. Oh. Um, so apart from your father's passing, has there been any stresses recently? Like what? Um, has there any has anything happened quite recently before? Well, you know, doctor, when it rains, it rains cats and dogs, you know, I have a problem in my work, you know. Um they, they transfer me to a new place which is far and I I, I must drive to a uh, long duration now I cannot drive because of this problem and I also have a lot of debts and I pay uh, and I must pay for the bank a lot of money mm -hmm. it seems to me there's a lot going on in your life so there's the financial difficulties there's work difficulties yeah okay. With this going on, how has family been responding to, to to your condition, to your situation at the moment? Well, well, they became very, very cooperative. They used to blame me because of this, of, of the accident, because I was driving. My father passed in, in, in the car accident while I was driving. I was driving fast. But after the, this problem, nobody is, is blaming me. They are all showing love and care. That must have been difficult for you. You were the one driving. Okay, but since this happened, the family, your family has stopped, okay, blaming you and they're more worried yeah. about condition. Okay. Um, do you have any physical health issues, Roberta? No, they, 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 no, no. The, the physician said that I don't, don't have anything. Okay. You, you did tell me that you've been having quite a lot of challenges in your life. How has your mood been? Well, everything is okay. Okay, have you been sleeping okay? Yes, yes. Okay, what of your energy levels? Everything is okay. Okay, sometimes uh, I'm aware that when people are under quite a lot of stress, they, they can have some unusual experiences, like hearing people, voices or uh, people they can't see. Has that been the case with you? One minute remaining. Yes. No, no, I don't have any of these. One minute okay. remaining. Is this the first time you're seeing a psychiatrist? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. By any chance, do you use drugs and alcohol drugs, uh, Roberta? No, no, no. Okay. You don't use drugs. What about alcohol? No, no. Okay. Has anyone in the family ever had something similar? No. Family. Okay, Roberta. Thank you so much for speaking with me. So you've told me that you, you were at your father's funeral when you suddenly could have lost function of your left leg and your left arm. And you've also told me that there have been several stressors in your life recently in the area of work, your finances, and your father's recent passing. All physical health tests have returned 
normal and you don't care about your condition at the moment, I would like to carry out an examination of your leg and arm and then yeah. see how we can support you. Is that okay? Okay, okay. Thank uh, you. Time, how do you feel? Time, dear. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. How do you feel about what you did? Give me your feedback. Very good. Have you ever been to the cask before? <laughs> no, very I clever. The first Thank time you. for you. Very much. I'm a very clever. Very clever, Masham. I'm okay. happy that you are all clever today. So let's Thank see you. how you can do it. But the only thing which I would just pay attention to. I want you to be, you, you know, say something different from the other candidates which should show that you understand this type of disorder. It is more common with a childhood uh, difficulties, uh, whether it is a uh, medical problems or any difficult uh, traumatizing childhood, okay? okay. And so it is, this is the only thing which I would have wished that you would have uh, paid attention to. Uh, very nice that at the end that you highlighted the temporal association between the symptoms and the stressors. And the thing which the candidates miss in this particular station that it is a conversion disorder and it is secondary to stressors. So we pay attention to this. Most candidates say, think that it's all because the, uh, the patient has a severe stress because of her father's stress. And that's it. They just they don't ask about any other stressors. But in this particular station, there is a stressors either you can have her as a student, she has some sort of education problems, or you can have this patient as a someone who is working and she has stressor in her work, she has stressor with her husband, she has stressor with her family who kept blaming her because of the death of the father, because this uh, if her father passed away. Uh, secondary to his trauma in an accident, which she was the driving the car. Okay, but anyway, it was very good, very clever. I liked your approach, very elegant, very, very empathetic. I liked it very, uh, very much good, mashallah. Thank you. Your introduction was good. As I said, the rule of thumb, introduce yourself, Greet the patient with his name or her name and explain why you are talking with him. And though this is a very simple rule, many candidates forget it or they don't know it. They forget to say the name. They forget to explain why they are talking with the patient. They even forget the patient's name. So make sure that when you start talking, you give a good impression about yourself. Good impression persists. Um, your 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 a justification to why you are talking with her could have been just more simple. Uh, uh, you said that it is part of the holistic approach. You know, this is a big word. Uh, the, it could have been a could could have been considered as a medical jargon. Just you may say mind and body are one unit, and it is common to have physical symptoms due psychological reasons particularly if there is stress and the clinical assessment and investigations are all okay. I think this justification is simple. No one can say that you are using medical jargon with these simple words, but you have justified this question this, uh, to some extent, okay, no problem. Your taking the complaint was very organized and you wanted to know exactly how was she doing before the onset and again, I highlight this part of taking the complaint, the Royal College always put some tricks in this station, in this area, to know the candidates who are keen to know what are the participating and the predisposing factors. And because, you know, as a matter of fact, nobody wakes up with a psychological problem. So definitely there has been going on, which ended up with a psychological problem. So candidates who are keen or they are able to assess the precipitating and the predisposing factors, definitely they have a good, better chance to pass. The symptoms of syndrome. Now here, there is no neurological problem. This lady is free from any medical problem. It's all about what could be the stressors behind this, okay? So you want to know exactly the stressors. You want to know exactly uh, how does she feel with these physical symptoms, okay? And you highlight the label indifference, which uh, you did highlight it very good. And one thing which you can add a chair in top, uh, if you want to check if there is any secondary gain, so if she might be seeking for anything like uh, any uh, 
incentives, any changes, okay? And this is secondary game. So symptom syndrome here is the temporal relation between these uh, uh, sudden uh, unexplained neurological symptoms and the stresses and the label indifference which she is having and the possibility of having secondary game. Okay, you ask about the psychological and also in the comorbidity, you could have asked, you ask also about the social. Okay, very good that you asked some questions about the impact coping and risk, but I wish that you would have asked about the dark thoughts of harming herself or, uh, or, or life is not worth living with all this going on in her life. The past history and family history, I think you just don't, just ask these questions to show that I even doubt that the, the, the consultant might be uh, might know this information that conversion disorder is more common uh, among those who have childhood problems, okay, whether it is physical or psychological traumas. Termination, it was very good, did, and, and that's it. Uh, very clever, mashallah. Thank you. Dr. Let's see the feedback of our colleagues. It's okay. So nobody is giving feed. Doctors, please give your colleagues some sort of feedback. Okay, this is the mark. Where did it go? Yes, this is the mark sheet. So you identified the issues and priorities. And here the issues and priorities, by the way, is, are not the, the physical symptoms. The issues and priorities are the social stresses and so on. You, fail, you, you, you recognize the aspects of history. Uh, you explain in depth the symptoms. You did risk assessment. You paid sufficient attention to her health. You, you kept asking me, what is your explanation? Definitely this point is going to be scored for you. You asked me about the possible associated psychological or social information. It was very organized. Your approach was not formalic. Your attitude was elegant. And your question style and language was good, mashallah, mashallah. And pay attention, doctors. Uh, well, though it is not an exam in which you open your, the textbooks, but in order to, make, to, be, to be confident, just try to refresh your memories. Just go through some visual materials, which will help you to, to refresh your memories. Just say, don't go through textbooks and articles and so just something like this definitely will help you to refresh your memory. This would make you more confident. You know what you are talking about. You know what is conversion disorder, okay? MashaAllah, Dr. Very clever. Thank you so much for your preparation. Thank you very much, Dr. Hossam. Just a, just a quick question, the childhood history, um, because of time, is uh, like what question? This is just you... one question. So, can you tell more about your childhood? Have there been any physical problems, any psychological, any traumas, or any bad memories? A couple of questions, no, not, not in depth history. That's it. Well, thank you. And actually, much. you had time, by the way. You had time. You had not less okay. than <laughs> okay. Many, okay. mashallah. Who would like to go next, though? Thank Please. you. Me, I would like to go next. Dr. Stanley, Dr. Charles, okay. So what is your station, Dr. Bulimia. Okay. Okay. So here are.
You're ready? I'm ready whenever you're ready. Though. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so, one, two, three, go. Let's say my name is uh, Jennifer. Okay, one, two, three, go. Hello, my name is Dr. Stanley. I'm, I'm one of the doctors from the mental health department. Oh, you're Jennifer, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, your doctors from the um, the emergency department has asked me to have a chat with you, uh, especially as it concerns um, your issues of using of insulin. Is it okay if we go ahead? Yes, yes. So uh, can you tell me what has been happening about... Um, your treatment with his well insulin. it seems that uh, i'm not using my insulin and i keep having high blood sugar level so the doctor mm -hmm. said that there's a problem with my eating habits in order for in order mm -hmm. to make sure that everything's okay they saying that i should talk with you okay okay could you tell me why why have you not been using insulin as as prescribed? Well, whenever I use insulin, I think that I have insulin resistance and I'm not able to lose weight, and I get fat, so I stop taking insulin. Well, everything is okay when I stop insulin, but the problem is that sometimes I eat too much, and without taking insulin, my blood sugar shoots high, and I go to the hospital. Mm. Hmm. I, I can see it's, it's quite difficult for you, right? Yes. Okay. Um, talking about eating too much, and um, you, you seem so very focused with your weight. Could you tell me your eating habit on a, on a normal day? You know, it's, well, I, I try to eat healthy. You know, I, I do, you know, this intermittent fasting. And, you know, I, I follow this, everything, uh, everything, eh, 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 all the the right things I do, but sometimes I lose control and I eat too much. And mm. and, and, and that's what makes my blood sugar shoot so high. Mm. Losing control and eating too much. Okay, yeah, I'll come yeah. back to that. But, but uh, since when did you start uh, having this problem with controlling your your weight? Well, I think I I, I cannot tell exactly when I... I maybe four years ago, I... 22 years now. Okay. Okay. So um what is your weight now? My weight is 62. I think if my weight is 55 it would be fine. Mm. I can also see from your note that you have a uh, you have a target weight you want to achieve. Uh, what could that be? 55 I think would be very nice. Okay. Okay. Do you know uh, what is uh, body mass index? Well, yes, I know. I think my body mass index now is around 30. I want to make oh. it to 25. I see. Okay. But have you got any person you, you want to emulate, maybe a role model you want to achieve same stature with? No, not, not that much. No, I just want to just look fit and that's it. Okay. I think if I'm 55, it will be fine. Yeah. You told me that uh, you've been losing, um, stop um, refusing insulin because you want to achieve weight loss. Is there yeah. any other thing you do to achieve this weight loss apart from insulin? Well, I just feel that if whenever I eat too much, you know, if I just uh, do intermittent fasting and sometimes I vomit, I know this is not something healthy, but I just induce vomiting whenever I feel that I'm, I ate too much. Okay, you induce yourself to vomit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Do you also make yourself to purge, maybe with purging pills? No, no. It's just, just stick my my, my finger in my mouth and just. Vomit. Okay. What What about exercising? Have you been doing that much often these days? No, just going regularly, just following, you know, with my personal trainer i don't do much exercise but just go to the gym maybe three or four times or one hour and but you know the problem is that this balance of eating too much which ruins everything yeah 
yeah and uh, you you told me that you lose sometimes you lose control and eat too much and now you purge how does that make you feel afterwards well i know i feel that this is a very stupid thing but but you know this is what happens sometimes i feel so stressed and i eat too much and then feel so uh, sad and disappointed and i go i try to get rid of what i ate hmm. okay Apart from the diabetes you're using insulin for, do you have any other physical concerns? Like what? Any other any other health physical health issues? No, no. They said that I don't have anything else apart from the diabetes. Okay, how has your mood been all this while? Well, my mood is fine. I don't have anything. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, feeling uh, frustrated when you vomit, uh, has that made you lose control or maybe you feel life doesn't work living? No, no. Okay. Have there been times you heard voices of people that are not there in clear no, consciousness? No, no, no. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. I just want to check with you. Uh, you. You know, you say you lose control. Will you describe yourself as someone that's, that's impulsive? To some extent, yes, yes. Okay, okay. How has this impacted with your academics in school? Well, well it, it, this the problem that I go to the hospital. That's it. Apart from this, everything is fine. One minute remaining. Okay. Have you got any support at all? Yes, I have my family, which are very supportive. Okay. Well, has it got to the extent of using alcohol to make yourself feel better? No, no. Okay. Have you seen a psychiatrist before? No, this is the first time. Okay. Thank you very much for speaking with me. From our discussion, I think you're having what we call bulimia nervosa. Have you heard about that? No. What is this bulimia nervosa? Okay. It's a kind of eating disorder where people uh, actually get uh, so worried about gaining weight and they do anything to, to lose weight, especially after eating uh, quite large of amount of food over a short period and they induce vomiting. Yeah, I, okay. Yeah, I, I can tell you what it means going forward for you, if you don't mind. Time, time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how do you feel about what you did? Please give your colleagues some sort of, uh, of uh, feedback, please. How do you feel, Dr. Charles, about what you did? I didn't have time to do to progress to, get, to do my prognosis. Okay, so pay yes, attention to, second, so pay attention to the following, Doctor Dear Doctor Charles. Uh, there, are, there are particular issues which could be sensitive now. Uh, sensitive if when you talk about them professionally, you should just take some permission, like you know, eating habits, uh, taking drugs in uh, these sexual uh, life and so on. Uh, these are issues which you don't encounter and enter except after taking the patient's permission. You should ask your girl to ask her about her body image and her weight, her eat habits, which are very personal and sensitive. So try to approach these areas next time in a sensitive way. Okay, uh, your introduction was good, but unfortunately, you just entered bluntly into these sensitive issues, which is not the best thing to do. Your complaint, you want to know exactly uh, what's going on, which you did ask about. Uh, we wanted to know the current weight, how much weight did she lose, what is your ideal weight, so this is the current situation. So on, you ask about when did she start to lose, uh, to try to feel uncomfortable because of her weight, and uh, you want to know the course, so is it up and down and so on. And before the onset, you so so I said to you, so it it started four years ago. So don't miss this question. So I get that it started four years ago. I'm wondering before that, do you have any problem which you would like to to it to it, or which you feel towards your body? Very important question. As I said, this is an area which the Royal College pay attention to. Now you have this syndrome of bulimia. How do we assess this psychological phenomenon? As we said, we have four domains, the thinking, feeling, behavior, physical symptoms. So we want to know exactly about her experience. We want to know 
the thinking, what is her ideal body weight? How many kilograms she should she wants to lose? Is she the one who is preoccupied by calories in uh, in uh, most of the time? Well, you want to know how does she feel when she eats too much, which she do us. Does your weight make you less confident? So this is the feeling, the feelings associated with this particular syndrome. She is feeling less confident because of her body image. Okay, and uh, behavior, what do you do to lose weight? So you are, which you asked, but I felt it was a bit organized. Okay, uh, I, I wish that you would have asked a part, in particular, have you ever ate a big amount of food in a short time and tried to get rid of it by pointing to the size? You want to know exactly how many times per week? What does she do after that? Does she use any medication which you have asked? Anything makes these attacks more. And in, in, when you ask this question, anything makes these attacks more, I set you in the, but you didn't pay attention, whenever I'm stressed. So you want to know exactly what brings these attacks. Nobody just go to eat without nothing. Without there, is, there must be something which triggers this. She, whenever she is stressed, so what makes her stressed? And you can have some sort of relation problems with her boyfriend whenever she uh, reminds her, something reminds her with her childhood, anything can make her go and eat too much. Mm. Okay, so you also, have, and, and also in particular, this uh, bulimia is associated with some dental or bowel problems. Not uncommon to have dental and bowel problems with bulimia. So these are the domains of the syndrome of bulimia, the thinking, the feeling, and the behavior, and the physical symptoms which can be associated. When you cover all these domains, definitely you will be uh, considered to cover this uh, syndrome in depth. Now, regarding the comorbidity, she's already assessed physically, and she has uncontrolled diabetes, so no need to ask in details about the comorbid physical disorders while you are checking the comorbidity, check for the etiological factors. And here, pay attention that the task here is about also the etiological factors. Assess for positive and negative factors which will impact the further treatment, okay? Prognostic factors. Okay, so let's see, uh, we could pass through the, now here you want to know if she is also having some sort of a, uh, which you ask about uh, the, the impulsivity. I wish that you ask about the childhood also, okay? Mm -hmm. You ask about the mood, you ask about the self-esteem. You didn't ask about self-esteem. Uh, I, I wish that you asked some social questions about the social life. Because there's a point for the candidates who ask about the social life, okay? And then you ask about the coping and the risk, everything is okay, passing, past history and family history. I didn't, I, you didn't ask about the family history, if there is any associated family history related way of uh, eating disorder. It is very common to have an eating disorder uh, uh, with a family member who have a, also yeah. have an eating disorder. And finally, delivering the diagnosis which you did. So let's see rapidly, and this will be the last time for find the uh, mark sheet. So you did identify the issues and priorities. Uh, the, you, 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 the aspects of history you passed through, the impact coping, the risk of mobility, et cetera, the presence and in depth related to symptoms, this could be or not, could or could not be sportful, but you covered in depth, but could have been better. You assess the risk. Uh, well, I felt that you were keen to engage me in what your, your assessment, so 0.5 is going to be scored for you. But unfortunately, point number six, not going to be scored. You didn't ask me any question about my social life except my education. I wish that it asked me some stresses. What could be the, the, the stresses? Which exactly. Triggered exactly. This, this bulimia. Bulimia is related to some stresses triggered, uh, which trigger these eating habits. Okay. It was a bit disorganized, a bit 
the node values have been dissolved. So other than this, everything was okay. And it could have been also for Malik because simply you just, you asked me about my weight and eating habits, you know, very blunt. Try to be more empathetic. Okay, pay attention to this, particularly the males. They are very blunt when they ask these questions. The females are required to be more empathetic and more. Yeah, more naturally. But males need to work on this point. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Charles. Very thank clever. You both. Thank you so much. Thank Who would like to, to go next? Me. Yes, Dr. Shola? Yes. So, Doctor, what is your station? Hypochondriasis. Hypochondriasis. Okay, give me just one minute to put it on the screen. Hypochondriasis. Ready? I'm ready whenever you're ready. Yes, but how can I address you? Let's say that my name is Michael. One, two, Michael. three, go. Hello, Michael. I am uh, Dr. Tuboi, one of the psychiatrists working here. Uh, Hello, I understand. Ma. Hello. I understand that neurologist referred you here uh, to uh, talk to you and understand you better. Is that well, I, I, I don't know why am I talking to a psychiatrist or so why did he refer me to you? I'm not crazy though. Mm -hmm. um, you know that um, mental and the body is the like a one thing and they are linked together. So uh, mentality can affect body and body can affect mentality. Sometimes they are presented to each other uh, presentation. Ma does it make sense? Well, to some extent, yeah. Okay, so what? How could you help me then? Okay, let's start with your main complaint. I understand that you complain of headache. Yes. Amara, can you explain it? Well, it is a type, you know, of headache with just all over my head, but it is very, very agonizing and. It is sometimes handicapping. I cannot do anything. I need to stay at least six to 12 hours in a dark room that it get, until it goes away. Mm -hmm. How How is the quality of pain? Is it pressing, throbbing? Well, no, it is dull aching, you know, it is dull, dull. aching. Dull aching all over your head. Yes, and yes. Is it, is it radiated to anywhere? No, 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 just in my all my head that sit and stays there most of the time. How often you have this pain? Well, in the beginning, it used to be, you know, once every month, but now, you know, it can come not less than three times a week and cannot go to my work. Because so, it, uh, I'm, I'm, well, I'm sure that it is a brain tumor, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. So it means that uh, your pain progressed over the time it, it, yes with time it is increased because it is a tumor so definitely with time it, it increases in size mm -hmm. and wh why do you think it is a cancer or tumor well, well i'm sure that because it is the same type of, of 
headache which used to come to my uncle who died from a hypochondria, from died from a brain cancer. So your uncle had cancer? Yes, brain cancer, and he died about one year ago. One year. I am so sorry about that. It runs in the family, though. Mm -hmm. So you're, you have uh, other family member have the same problem, cancer? Yes, me. Uh, my uncle and me, I have this type of cancer. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, have you ever uh, uh, waken up from sleep because of this headache? No, no, no. Okay. Would you please tell me when it has started? It started about one year ago. Okay. It's around the, the time that you lost your... Um, well, uncle. it started uh, before, before his death. It started before his death, but after his death, it, it progressed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe, maybe he, okay, around his, uh, he had cancer. Um, did it have, uh, do you have any problem at that time, around that time? Did you no, have any no, no. incident? Okay. No. Um, this pain, is there something that can alleviate this pain? Well, I use painkiller, but with time it doesn't make, it doesn't work because it is brain cancer. Uh, and the only thing which helps is just to stay in a dark room not less than 12 hours. And you know, uh, when I do this tw three or four times a week, uh, I cannot be uh, in any job. Mm -hmm. yes, so you are taking painkiller regularly? Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And it is according to the, the uh, what doctor prescribed or you are taking by yourself? Well, uh, sometimes they prescribe it, but, you know, I know that I need it, so I don't, it is an over-the-counter, can take Panadol anyway. Uh, do you do overdose of painkiller? What do you mean by overdose? I mean that how many tablets you were you are taking per day? Well, sometimes I take more than five Panadol tablets, but they said that it is a normal dose. Still, it is not. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that can um, aggravate or uh, worsen this problem, this headache? N nothing, doctor. It, in the beginning, these uh, these medications helping now nothing. Okay, okay, thank you for the information. Uh, you told that you have cancer. Do you believe that it is cancer? I'm 100% sure, doctor. It is the same type of headache which my uncle was suffering. Okay, and is there another explanation for this headache? No, 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 because the doctors did not find anything else. So definitely there is nothing, there is no other explanation. When when the doctor said that it is uh, not cancer or we cannot find anything wrong in your investigation or in your history, do you convince? Well, uh, uh, they, we know my uncle they missed the tumor in the beginning, so I feel I feel that I'm going through the same course. One minute remaining. Okay. One minute. How it affect your life? As I said, doctor, sometimes I miss work now. Many times, not less than, uh, it comes on, on three or four times, this headache comes, and I have to stay in the room for not less than six to 12 hours in dark okay. room. So how can I follow up with any job? Uh, do you uh, uh, cope with uh, using alcohol or something like that? No, no, no. Agency drugs? No, no. Uh, do you ha um, does it affect your mood? I'm just frustrated that no one knows what's going on. Uh, did you have any problem during childhood, long-term disease or? Yes, I, I used I, I used to have uh, some sort of childhood medical problems, but I don't remember does exactly it... what it is. Okay, does it affect uh, that? Uh, I mean, your thought maybe you feel that you want to end your life. No, no. Time, time, time. How do you feel about what you did? Oh, I didn't have time management first. As I, I said, couldn't... doctors, whenever you hear the bell of six minutes go through the impact coping risk, as I said, very good from you that you raised this important point of time management. When you hear the bell of six minutes, please, 
there are a lot of things which you should cover in this uh, task. So when you hear the bell of six minutes, immediately uh, start assessing the impact, coping, and risk, and then the boss history and family history, and finally delivering the diagnosis. So instead of uh, asking me more about the impact, coping, and risk, you should have delivered the diagnosis. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's see how this station could have uh, been uh, done. Uh, as I said, uh, these are this is your plan. These are the seven points which you should go through in order to make sure that you cover uh, the points in the mark sheet. Uh, show empathy, please, while you are hitting the complaint and the difficulties which he, he has been through because of this brain tumor, as he believes. As I said, you will always get, you will get this question commonly. Why am I seeing the psychiatrist? I felt you were struggling. You are a bit struggling, doctor, while you are justifying very simple uh, answer can be done here. Uh, I understand your query, the mind and body are one unit, and it's common to have physical symptoms with psychological origin. It is common to have psych physical symptoms with psychological origin, particularly with the clinical assessment, all the investigations are within normal, okay? Very good, okay? But anyway, you're trying, you can phrase it then anyway, but please don't struggle. Don't show that you are not able to justify why he is talking to you, okay? Uh, show empathy when you hear the complaint. You want to know exactly what is the problem when did it all start? Is it increasing? And how was he doing before the onset? And as you can see before the onset, there has been some sort of family problems and stress because his uncle was suffering from brain tumor and so on. If you want to add the cherry on top, ask him if this is the first time for him to have any physical complaint, though the investigations were okay, okay? Symptoms and syndrome against this the penalized, same these same questions of the somatic form pain disorder. You want to know exactly what is the nature of headache, you want to know the location, is it progressing, is it associating with nausea or vomiting? Is it progressing to the neck or any other part? Does it affect the vision? Or uh, what about the movement? If it is a real tumor, definitely you will find that it is progressing is associated with vomiting or nausea, and it is affecting the vision. And as I said, sleep is very important to differentiate between psychological headache and non-psychological headache. You want also to know how long does it last, and very important in the hypochondriasis, the investigation, you want to know how was he doing before between the attacks, you will find that he is consumed in the investigation process and this uh, online uh, search for the brain tumor. And, you, and the good thing which you did that you want, you highlighted the, uh, the deep belief in the patient that this is the, uh, uh, it is a brain tumor. You asked about the psychological, and I think you asked, uh, already he is physically cleared. So, and I, I didn't hear, did you ask me about my life circumstances? anyone around you to support you. So you missed this point. This is very important because there is a point for the psychological and social uh, 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 issues. So if you miss this, you will miss a point, okay? Impact and coping and risk, I think you covered this, a very important point, which the excessive use of painkillers. But I wish that you, you asked me about self-harm and life is not worth living. Yes, I asked, but very Okay, quickly. very good. Past history and family history, you asked about, you missed the delivering the diagnosis. Okay, I'll go through the mark sheet last time. Okay. As you can see, there are different types of headaches. I just refresh your memory, it is not only headache, there is tension, cluster, sinus headache, medication overuse, and post-traumatic headache. Okay, all these are headaches, which it's not only muscle against things, it's just headache, it's only pain in the head. There are different types of headaches. Anyway, so let's see how can we do this, uh, the mark sheet. So, 
Where is the mark sheet? Yes, here it is. You identify the issues and priorities. You identify the aspects of history. You did elicit the enough details, the relevant symptoms. I think you asked enough questions related to the assessment of the risk. Uh, you did ask me about the my health view, which you elaborated very good and highlighted. But unfortunately, point number five, point number six might not be a score for you because you didn't ask me about my social information. And it was a bit disorganized. Otherwise, everything was okay. And also, because you did not finish in seven minutes, uh, could be considered as poor management of time and poor management of consultation. So point number seven might not be scored for point number. So out of the communication, you might not score point number seven. And uh, that's it. Everything was okay. And please try to be more assertive while you are explaining why he is talking to a psychiatrist. Okay, I found that you're a bit struggling. Be ready with a, for a very good explanation. You will encounter this question uh, very common in this in this exam. Okay, thank you okay, so much, you. Doctor. Very clever, mashallah. Thank, thank you so you. much. Who would like to go next? I would like to go next, please. Doctor Sarah, yeah. Yes, Doctor Sarah. What is your station, though? Social phobia. Social phobia. See what is the social. Okay, so let's see. Watch out. Sarah, Sarah is very clever. Let's see. Okay, so this is a man who is going to his wedding, so don't don't forget to greet him and so on. Okay, and show empathy with the difficulties he had because of this uh, problem. Okay. I'm ready whenever you're ready. Okay, I'm ready. What's the, the patient's name? Let's say that my name is uh, Michael. Okay. Michael? One. Yeah. One, okay. two, three, go. Hello, Michael. I'm Dr. Hilal from the mental health team. Hello, doctor. How are you? I'm fine. I understand the GP referred you because you uh, are worried about your upcoming wedding and wanted yeah. a medication. Right. Well, I explained for him what's going on, and he said that I must talk with you, though it is a happy uh, event, but I feel that I need mm. some sort of support in it. All right. First, I want to congratulate you for, for your wedding, okay? Thank you and so uh, if, if possible, I would like to know more about what's worrying you about the wedding. You know, the, the being in, a, in, in this situation where I'm the center of attention of Mm -hmm. All these people, you know, puts me on the edge. I, I don't want to appear, you mm -hmm. know, silly or do something stupid. Uh, okay, I feel that so I cannot face this situation. Mm -hmm. So you're worried about uh, being the center of attention uh, and everyone looking at you? Well, I've been always like this, and I don't think mm -hmm. that I'm able to face this situation. Well, you know, I asked my fiancé not to, not to do this generally, but she insisted. Oh. Okay, I can see how difficult this is for you. So you mentioned that this has been uh, uh, your problem for a while. So when did yeah. this start? It started, I think it started after my second evaluation, second education evaluation, I stumbled on the theater. Mm. I think then, since then I, I'm very worried that I might face this situation, which everyone laughed at me and 
it was recorded mm. on, 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 on video and Oh, it sounds like a difficult is... situation. I'm sorry yeah, about this. Yeah, yeah, but it, it, though it is about 20 years ago, but still I'm mm. worried that I might face this situation. Yeah. Must have been uh, an overwhelming situation. Yes. Okay, so, so since then, do you feel it's it's increasing this uh, this fear? No, it it is always there that I, mm. I, and I avoid any any place in which I there are mm. a lot of people which I don't know and. I'm center of yeah. attention. I just try to be in the periphery yeah. as much as possible. Okay. So you, you've been avoiding these situations for yeah, years. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. Is there anything in particular that makes you worry more when you're with people? No, just the more I'm in the center of attention, the more mm. I, I feel that I'm not confident, particularly if mm. there are both people and people whom I, I don't know. Okay. Anything uh, helps you calm down? Or, yes, or avoiding the situation. If, if there is avoid. something like this, it's just okay. avoid the situation. Okay. So before this all started, uh, did you ever struggle with any worries or anything? Um, any fears? No, I, I, it all started, as I said, maybe 20 years ago in my secondary, mm. uh, uh, second education graduation. And, and since then, it's, been going right. on almost like this. It's been going on. Okay. Yeah. So can you can you describe to me what happens if you have to face a situation like this? How do you well? Feel? I, well, I feel horrible. You know, I feel just mm. I, I'm I'm blushing and flushing, and mm. my my throat, you know, becomes dry and so on. Okay, so you feel uh, physical um, discomfort. Yeah, yeah, you know, my my for my my throat mm. becomes dry. Sometimes I feel, you know, some stomach aches but sometimes feel I feel some trembling sometimes yeah. I sweat not always but these mm. things usually go. your heart traces for example you feel like yeah yeah not mm. always but mm. from time to time sometimes. okay I understand and what goes in your mind in this situation well, well the most thing which uh, I don't want to be in a similar situation uh, I don't want anyone to pay attention that uh, I'm looking like this. I, I, I don't want mm. anyone to laugh at me. Okay, so you, you tend to avoid this. Uh, and if you have to face this situation, is there anything you do? Well, uh, nothing I uh, can do. I just mm. try to avoid them. That's it. Okay, I understand. Um, do you mind if I ask you, uh, aside from these social situations, do you have any other worries? Are you able to relax generally? Well, I'm okay. a type of person who get get easily worried. Everyone mm. is about. Okay, so you worry easily. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and uh, do you have any other specific fears or worries? Like what? Fears of any anything in particular. Some people are are afraid of specific. No, 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 no. phobias. That's no, no, no. Okay, okay, and in in all of this. All of what's going on, how's your mood? My mood is fine. I'm happy that mm. I'm going to I'm going to marry this lady and I like mm. her, but you yes. know I'm, I'm I'm worried about this particular situation. Yes, I I understand how overwhelming it is. All right. And sometimes when people are so worried and so stressed, they get they feel uh, strange experiences. Did something like this ever happen? Like maybe hearing voices or no, 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 no. I, I've never encountered. Hmm. Okay, good. Um, how about your social situation? Anyone around to support you? Yes, yes, I have my girlfriend, hmm. and uh, hmm. I have some few friends, not a lot, but every they have support. That's good, good to hear. Okay, do you have any uh physical health issues? Like what? Any any physical or medical problems? No, no, no. Hmm. All right. One minute remaining. So uh, I can see this is overwhelming and it's affecting uh, your your life and um, makes it, making you worry about your wedding. Have you ever, with all of this uh, stress, th had thoughts about that life is not worth living or ending your life? No, 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 no. Okay. And do you have any family members with similar problems? No, no. Okay. Did you ever uh, see a mental health professional before? No, it's the first time. 
Okay. All right, Michael. It seems from what we discussed that you're having uh, what's called social phobia. Have you heard about this? Now, what is this social phobia? It is a type of anxiety uh, disorders, and uh, I, I would be happy to explain more in, in, in an, another appointment. Thank you so much, time, this. time. Very clever, mashallah, very clever. Very, very clever. Uh, Thank everything you. was good. Everything was good, mashallah. I, I, the only thing which I wish that you, you just highlight that you understand that uh, thyroid problems are commonly associated. So when I, you ask me, do you have any physical problems? I expect it from mm. you to just mm. mention and probe the thyroid, probe thyroid symptoms mm. like thyroid. change in the, how does he feel for hot or cold weather, any change in bowel habits and so on. Mm. Uh, other than this, it was very, very good. Very good. And also one question, if he has a plausible explanation for his social uh, mm. behavior. It's okay, very... very uh, just to avoid the, 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 the paranoia and so on, if he has mm -hmm. plausible explanation, because in the mark sheet, as we have seen, there is a point for the candidates who are keen mm -hmm. to put in consideration the uh, patient's uh, health view. So let's see uh, rapidly our, our notes to see. Dr. I forgot Sarah to ask Sarah. about uh, alcohol and drugs. I think and you asked uh, you asked her if he used anything. Yes, it would have been better to ask in particular alcohol because it is mm -hmm. not a very common practice for those who have social anxiety to use alcohol to cope with it. A very common practice in the mm -hmm. Western society. Very commonly they use alcohol to make sure that they are uh, uh, good in the social gatherings. So let's see rapidly. You did introduce yourself a very good. Uh, you asked about the complaint, the onset of the course uh, and the duration. How was he doing before the onset? The predisposing fact. It's very good that you asked about the predisposing fact. Very good. You wanted to know the syndrome, as we said always, if you want to know exactly what's going on and ask about the symptoms in depth, there are four domains, the feeling, thinking, physical symptoms and behavior. These are the domains which we cover in depth. Definitely, you will assess any syndrome uh, thorough, which you did. The comorbidity, you ask about the possible associated uh, anxiety symptoms, very good. And the impact and coping and risk was very good. Past history and family history, very good. And uh, eventually, you deliver the diagnosis and you were able to manage to end the task in seven minutes. Excellent, Dr. Salam, inshallah. Excellent. I will not go through the mark sheet just for time. And I was very uh, tired also. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, inshallah, alaikum, Dr. Mashallah. Thank you so much. Who would like to go next? Hi, Dr. Hassan. I am Hezron here. My station is anorexia. OK. The stations and rigs. We'll just put it on the screen right now. Here it is, Doctor. Okay, so let's see the rigs stage. Okay, see so it. Is. I'm ready. Now. Okay. Okay. Stop. Let's say now my name is Roberta. 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 All right. 
Hi, good yes. evening, uh, Miss Roberta. I'm Dr. Hedron here, the psychiatrist. I understand um, that uh, you've been referred by the GP for some menstrual problem. Could you tell me a little bit more about that? Well, uh, I, I discussed this with the GP, said that I must talk with you. I have been missing it for about three months now. I see. Okay, okay. And um, I also I gather that you've been intentionally trying to lose the weight, am I right? Yes, yes. Could you tell me a little bit more about that? Well, I feel that my body weight is not the ideal, so I try to lose weight in order to be in the best shape. Um, but the uh, GP said that it is too much and there could be some sort of medical problem. I see. Okay. Right. And, and how long have you been struggling with uh, your weight? Well, uh, I, I feel that it has been going on for about, I'm 25 years now, so it has been going on for seven years. Seven years, okay. okay. And um, how did it all start? Well, I, 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 it started when I tried to do dieting. I kept losing weight until I, I couldn't, I fainted. This was in the age of 18, and they said to me that I must talk with, this, uh, with the GP. And uh, how has this progressed over the past seven years? Well, from time to time, I feel that I need to control my life and control my weight. And about maybe six months ago, I found that I need to control my weight and my life is out of control. So I decided to go through the journey of losing weight. I see. Okay. And and what happened before these seven years you know, uh, that caused the concern of your weight? Well, well there are what do you mean? Um, nothing happened. My life was okay. I have some stresses at home. That's it. But anything was, everything was okay. Okay, right. And um, how do you? Uh, can you tell me more about the stresses at home? Well, my my mother and father are you know very. They they, they just in, they intrude themselves in every everything. I didn't have any space of freedom. And, I, I I I was not happy at home at this time. I see. Okay. Do you, do you feel like uh, you don't have much control over your life? What well, what when, when I feel this, I feel that if I gain gain control over my weight, I feel that I'm I can do it. Okay. All right. All right. And. Um... Um, is what are, what are your thoughts about your weight? Do you have a, a target weight that you want to achieve? Well, no, there is no particular weight, but I feel that by losing weight, I feel better. So definitely, uh, there is a particular time that I will be better and I will stop. So uh, I don't have a particular weight, but I feel that I need to lose weight. Okay, and... Um... Could I ask you a little bit more about uh, your mood? How, how has this uh, affected your mood? Well, my mood is fine. Okay, and uh, I see, understand that uh, you've been also missing your periods. Um, is there any reason for it? Well, I don't know why, but the GP said that this could be because of my dieting. Okay. And uh, has this happened before? You're missing periods earlier. You told me that it only happened for three months. It happened before, yes, yes. But uh, I it, it it comes again when I stopped dieting. But I fainted in the gym, so the I I went to the GP. He said that I must talk with you. I see. Okay. All right. And um, have you ever seen a psychiatrist in the past? Uh, due to this problem. No, this is the first time. All right. Um, is there anyone else in your family that has a similar problem? No. No. Yes, my mother. My mother has the similar problem. 
um, is she does, does she impose any uh, thing on you or a weight or a certain? Uh, she she weight? always she always think that I should be should be better and I should not lose weight and so on. Okay. Okay. All right. Um. How have you been coping with all of this? Uh, I. The, the thing which helps me to cope is to lose weight as much as possible. This helps me to control my weight. Okay. And sometimes when things get too difficult, sometimes people can use drugs or alcohol. Have you used any of this? No, no, no. Okay. Um, how has your eating habits uh, impacted your life? Well, uh, I, I feel that I'm a bit weaker and I fainted several times, so I'm not able to go to work. One minute remaining. Um, besides your work, has it impacted your relationships? Well, I, I, I just broke up with my boyfriend, so it didn't affect with my relationship, so it has nothing to do with it. Have you had any thoughts of harming yourself or anything like that? No, no, no. All right. Um, Ms. Roberta, I feel that uh, you could be having the diagnosis of anorexia nervosa. Do you know yes. what that is? No, what is this anorexia nervosa? It's basically an eating disorder. Uh, maybe we could arrange that as a to talk more about this. I could also give you some leaflets to share with you some information about this as well. Time, time, time. So how do you feel about what you did? Um, uh, still lacking a bit of structure, I guess. So give him some, feed some feedback, please, doctor. Okay, so... Uh, so, dear doctor, so pay attention to the following. As I said, uh, the eating and body image and so on or sensitive areas particularly in this station you also have a sensitive issue which is defenses so you we don't discuss this without taking a permission from the role player as i said the male doctors always need to stress on this female doctors are empathetic by their nature but male doctors should pay attention to the empathy and these sensitive issues, you don't go bluntly through them. You want to present yourself as a, an experienced uh, clinician who is fit to be a member of the Royal College. So you don't go through these sensitive issues without being sensitive. And take your permission, please, if you don't mind. As we said, you did introduce yourself, but I wish that you would have just explained that you are going through sensitive issue, saying something like weight and eating habits can be sensitive. However, GP feels that there has been excessive weight loss over the past year, which needs to be medically evaluated. Therefore, I would like to discuss these sensitive issues. Are you okay with that? Just this will show that you are professional in approaching these sense of issues. Now, the thing, thing which I wish that you would have done that you take the complaint professionally. I, I felt that you did cover many points, but you were going over, all over the place. So the first thing you want to know is the current situation. Can you tell me more about your current weight? How much weight did you lose? And you want to know exactly when did she start to intentionally lose weight? Anything happened at that time? So you will discover that she started six months. Okay, so what happened? As I said, nobody wakes in the morning uh, with a psychological problem with bulimia. Or so there must be some sort of precipitating factors. She broke up with her boyfriend six months ago, and since then she started to feel the need to lose weight and control her body image. She lost self-confidence, and this is her way to gain self-confidence. Okay, so pay attention to this. All right. Anything makes your desire to lose weight increase, like stressors, which you should have asked, as I said, this is part of assessing the course. Anything makes it, uh, it makes this uh, decrease the desire that this period, uh, uh, during this period, have you ever had attacks of binge eating? It is very common to have bulimia in association with 
uh, anorexia and it is not a very healthy sign. Okay. okay. And you want to know before the answer, so you, as I said, this is very important to know exactly what happened before the onset, which started six months ago. Now you want to know the symptoms of the syndrome. As I said, when you assess the symptoms of syndrome, you have thinking, feeling, behavior, physical symptoms. So thinking, what are the thoughts which predominate the uh, mind of a patient who has anorexia? So she, has, she does not have an ideal body weight, but she feels less confident. Her body image is not a very good thing for, from her perspective. Okay, She is almost preoccupied with, her, with calories, and uh, she, she doesn't have a particular amount of kilograms to lose. She just wants to lose calories. Okay, And she wants just want to lose kilograms, not like the bulimia. Bulimia. To some extent, the issue, the methods are clear for them, for, but for the anorexia, you just, you just go and lose weight as much as possible. You want to know the feelings. How does she feel about her physical appearance? How does she feel about eating too much? How does uh, her weight uh, make her feel if she's less confident and so on? Same questions related to the uh, the the the. Uh, the very common, very close to the bulimia. You want to know exactly, I didn't hear from you, what does she do to lose weight? She goes excessively to the uh, to the uh, gym and she restricts food and so on. You want to ask in particular if she's using purgatives or laxatives, okay? Or she in particular, she induces vomiting, very important. You missed this talk, which is very important. You want to know how does she lose weight? What makes this weight loss so strong that she is losing uh, her menses? So you want to know more details. Okay. You want to know more about her physical problems. So she is fainting, okay, uh, and she is losing uh, uh, menses, as I said. Uh, comorbidities, I didn't. You did not ask me anything related to the comorbidities, the psychological or the social and so on. You did not ask me anything. Though, as you can see, this is the area in which you can uh, make sure that you cover the second part of the task, which is etiological factors. So the, in the comorbidities, we know there could be some associated uh, psychological uh, the perfect, she can be perfectionistic, as we can see, this is one of the etiological factors, okay. And okay. Also, you want to know the stressors, you want to know the family, okay, if they are supporting, and so on. Um, childhood, very important. Okay, so all these are the areas which can be uh, you can check in order to make sure to, that you cover the second part of the task. Okay? Okay. Very important to ask in details about the family. If they are supportive, if they are close to her. You want to know the impact about, you did not ask me any, did you ask me about the risk if she is using any recreational drugs, alcohol? Yeah. You did not ask me any questions about the risk. We did ask questions about past history and family history, and you delivered the diagnosis. So um, I'm not going to go through the mark sheet, but pay attention to the points which we have discussed. We have discussed. Please, whenever you hear the bell of six minutes, you must ask in details about the impact coping and the risk. Go through the past history and family history, deliver the diagnosis. Pay attention, please, to the task. Here you have two parts of the task. It is not one part. It is not uncommon to have two parts of the task, the history and the etiological factors. What you did is a very common mistake that you did not do the second part of the task, which is the... Uh, the uh, okay. Okay. Thank you so much, doctors. I hope that you found it helpful. Uh, please, from now on, not less than four stations every day. 
in order to make sure that you cover, you have 140 stations to be covered other than the physical examination. So when you uh, make sure that you revise and read at least four stations, whether you do it with a friend or you read it thoroughly, try as much as possible to have a study partner which you revise with regularly. You can pick up a study partner from the group. That's why there is a group which you can check if there is anyone available to, to revise at any time. Okay, you can start from now and have a good chance to pass, but make sure that you study regularly and you study home. I wish to see all your names on the pass list and thank you so much. It was a pleasure and a privilege. Thank you so much.